You're listening to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast, episode number 34. Welcome to the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. Music tech tips, lesson ideas, advice, news and interviews, especially for music teachers. Brought to you by midnightmusic.com.au. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast. I'm Katie Wardrobe, a music technology and education trainer, speaker and consultant from midnightmusic.com.au where I help music teachers with tips, tutorials and lesson ideas for using technology in music classes. Now, it's recently asked by a member of my online community about iPad apps, and the member had recently found out that she was getting a class set of iPads to use with her students, which was great news, but of course she had been asked to provide a list of apps that she wanted to have installed on those iPads. And I do see this question pop up a lot in Facebook groups and other places in social media about what sort of apps should you request to get installed onto your class set of iPads that students are actually going to use. I thought I'd give you my list here today and of course this is my list for 2017 at the moment. Um, It does change over time as apps kind of come and go but uh, some of the apps on this list have actually been my top choices anyway since iPads have been around. Now the list can be quite specific to what you are teaching so you need to consider that when you're thinking about coming up with your own list if you're in the position to do that. In today's episode, I'm going to concentrate really on apps that are um, more for the general music classroom. Um, They can really be used across the board, but that's the sort of area I'm concentrating on today. And these work really, really well for students in elementary and middle school, but they can be used outside those age groups too. And all of the apps are very, very flexible for different age students. Now, I've stopped at 10 apps, kind of. (laughs) You'll understand why I say kind of in a moment. It's really easy to come up with a list of hundreds of apps, and there are hundreds available in the App Store. And there are so many amazing apps out there. I think it can become really overwhelming for people, especially if you're starting fresh with iPads, you haven't really used them with students before. It can be hard to know where to start. So I really think you're better off choosing a handful of apps and using those really well to their full extent and then expanding from there. You can always add things later on and I know some of you can't add new apps until perhaps the new school year but I still think you're better off maybe just having a handful of apps that you use a lot and that you know quite well and use in an in-depth way. So the focus of this list is apps that students are going to use, of course. So this is not necessarily the list I would suggest for teachers to get on their own personal iPad, although I think all of them are fantastic. Uh, But this is really the ones that I would choose for students to use. And I'm concentrating on ones that allow students to create, create something in a musical way, um, that also allow them to collaborate and share and that allow them to learn. So they might be learning something in a musical sense or otherwise. There is no right and wrong with this. So if your list is completely different to mine, that's totally fine. It's very personal and you kind of need to think about what you want to teach first and then find the app that's going to work with that. Now, I know that saying that to people, it can be kind of hard if you haven't used iPads in the classroom before. Sometimes you do need to see the app first to realise what the possibilities are. So um, do think about what you're teaching. But then again, you know, if you hear about an app and an innovative way that someone's using it, sometimes it can open up things that you can teach as well. Now, as I said, these are really my personal top 10 suggestions. This is what I would start with. But, you know, you go with whatever works for you. Now, another little note, um, which I'm going to mention, which is to do with the update to iOS 11. Now, that's just an update at the time of recording. That's an update that's come out uh, fairly recently for um, iOS devices. And there's a little thing that you need to know about the update to iOS 11, if you haven't already, is that some iPad apps from the past may not work once you've updated to iOS 11. So Apple has decided that they're no longer going to support 32-bit apps. They're only going to support 64-bit apps. And so going forward, if there's an app that you really love and it hasn't been updated for a while, it's possible that it might not work on the iPad or um, your iPhone once you've updated to iOS 11. 
Now, there's a link that I'll share in the the show notes. Um, If you haven't already updated and you want to see which apps are going to be affected, if you do update, you, you can see a place on your iPad where there's a list of apps which will come up which will say that these apps have not been updated in a while and they may not work or they will not work probably on iOS 11 once you've updated. I have a very, very long list in this section of my iPad. You basically go into your settings and and there's a place where you can go and it will show you the list. My list is about 93 apps or so. Now, I don't use all of these apps, um, you know, really frequently, so I'm not heartbroken about a lot of them, but there are a few, probably five or six that I am really sad about, uh, which are not going to work once I update. And I've been holding off just for a little bit so that I can see if I can find replacements for those apps in the meantime. So the list that I'm going to share today of the ones that I would suggest getting for students to use, uh, I'm going to share ones that will work, um, you know, regardless of whether you're on an older version of iOS or whether you've already updated to iOS 11. The last thing I'll say before I get to the list is that don't forget you don't always have to use apps. So there are lots and lots of websites that will work on iPads as well as apps that you would download from the App Store. So if you've already passed that time where you can get apps installed on your class set of iPads, don't worry too much. There are still lots of things that you can do uh, perhaps with what you have and then supplement that with websites that you can visit. Now I'll mention a few of those at the end of the episode so that'll be my little bonus uh, set of tips there. And I'll mention a few that work really well on iPads from a creativity point of view. So let's get into my list of, of top 10. Now, the first one in the list is probably not a big surprise and it's GarageBand. So um, it's it's one of the great music apps. It does not do everything, but gee, it does a lot for an app on an iPad, um, which is either free with your iPad or a very small cost. It's you know definitely less than $10 and the price does fluctuate from time to time. I won't talk exact prices of apps today because they really do change from country to country. I'm in Australia, so our prices are different to what's in the US Apple Store. So So just go and Google them or check them. I will list all of these apps in the show notes so that you can click through to the link and check the price in the app store for where where you live. So GarageBand really is a fantastic app. There's so much you can do with this from a creativity point of view. And if I had to choose just one single app, if I was only allowed to get one app on my iPad, I would probably choose this one. So things that you can do with GarageBand, you can record cover songs, uh, students can do composition projects, anywhere from really simple things, maybe recording a pentatonic melody to creating a song in an A, B form or ternary form. They could uh, create blues projects. They could record full-length songs. They can do storytelling projects that include funny voices and sound effects and music. You could use GarageBand to record a radio show or a podcast just like this one. And you could get them to record a theme song for a movie project that you're doing. Now, that's just a few things that you can do. There's so much more that you can explore in there. And one of the things I like about the version of GarageBand that's around at the moment is that it includes some Chinese instrument sounds. So if you're doing a world music project, that's a great thing to explore because it's just there handy for you. So GarageBand really has a lot of flexibility. And so that that's one of them. Now, I've put down that I would choose to have this installed on iPads, but as I mentioned, uh, you may not need to use up, you know, one of your top 10 if you're only limited to 10 apps. If you've got GarageBand already, of course, that means you can get something extra. So that may already be on the iPads that you're working with. Now, I will link in the show notes also to a free GarageBand iPad lesson um, blog post that I've written, which is called Transforming the Blues, in case you want to get some ideas about the sorts of things you can do with the GarageBand app. So that's number one, and I use it all the time. Really, really great app. Now, number two is actually not a music-specific app. My second one uh, choice is called Explain Everything. Now, this is like kind of like a whiteboard app. It's a little bit like PowerPoint in the way it works, uh, but kind of PowerPoint on steroids. That's how I would describe it. So when you open it up, you've got a white screen, like a slide in PowerPoint. And on that screen, you can draw, you can add shapes, you can add text, you can add images, you can put an audio file in there. Uh, You can press record in the app itself and record yourself speaking or singing. Uh, You can capture learning in that app. 
you can use it to teach something. You can actually record yourself teaching someone else how to do something. And that's a great way for students to prove that they have learned something is to teach someone else how to do that thing. Create presentations, just like PowerPoint presentations. I love using it for doing graphic notation projects. You can actually choose a like a pen tool from the menu and you can draw freely on the screen and you can actually record your voice or an instrument over the top of this while you're drawing. So if you can imagine young students may press record, they grab the pen tool and they might uh, make some vocal sounds, high sounds and low sounds or sounds that travel up like a glissando or down or uh, staccato sounds or legato sounds. And they can actually draw what they're singing on the screen with their finger so they can do a graphic representation of what sounds they're making. And then once they've uh, recorded that, they can actually press stop and you as a teacher can press play and see what they've drawn on the screen and hear their voice at the same time. So Explain Everything is essentially a great way to create videos and it allows you to capture all these types of things in a video format. Lots of teachers are using Explain Everything to um, create digital portfolios. So it's great to capture learning in a digital format. One thing you can do is create something in GarageBand, so separately in the GarageBand app. You can then uh, send the audio from your GarageBand file straight into Explain Everything and it ends up being a little play button on the screen in Explain Everything. And students could do this. They could put their GarageBand uh, sound file into Explain Everything and then they could actually put some text on the screen and write about their composition. So they might um, tell you what it is that they have composed, uh, what form it's in, what scale it uses and so on. And because you can put the audio file right there in Explain Everything as well, it's a great place to have both things together. And so that's one of the ways that some teachers are using it to create digital portfolio type things. Uh, a friend of mine, Cheryl, she has some great examples that she's been doing where she does is she gets them to create their, their garage band composition. They put the audio in there. They might put the lyrics from the file in there as well. So they'll type the lyrics out for the song that they've composed. They might have video of themselves performing their song in there too and so on. So it's just a really great way to combine lots of different multimedia. Now, one other way that I've used to explain everything is to create uh, bouncing ball videos. So, you know those videos where you can see lyrics on the screen and there's a red bouncing ball going across the top of the lyrics showing you when to sing which syllable of the word. You can actually use Explain Everything to create your own bouncing ball videos. And basically you can type the text in. I think I've used Twinkle Twinkle Little Star as my example. So you can see that typed out on the screen there straight into Explain Everything. And then what you can do in Explain Everything is from the menu is choose a pointer. And the pointer in inverted commas that I have chosen is a red dot. And then what you do is you press record, you sing twinkle twinkle and as you're singing you can point your finger at each of the syllables of the words. And the red dot follows your finger so it appears on the screen. And it's a great way to create your own version of these bouncing ball videos. It's been a really popular post on my website so I'll link to that again in the show notes too. Now, app suggestion number three is a really new one, and this has only come out a couple of weeks ago as I'm recording this episode, and this one is called SampleBot. It's an app which has been created by the person who created Loopy HD, which is another one of my favorite apps. I haven't included Loopy in this list today, um, but do go and check it out. Uh, Loopy is an app which allows you to create layers on top of layers, and you might have seen it on uh, the Jimmy Fallon show. It's been featured quite a number of times on there. Great app if you want to explore that one. But SampleBot is, is not that one, but it's created by the same person. And this allows you to have a basically like a soundboard on the, the iPad screen. You'll see a series of coloured squares. And in each of those squares, you can create and record a little sample of sound. Now, the sample of sound could be some body percussion, so a clap or a click or a snap or something like that. Uh, the sample could be instead uh, a vocal sound of some sort or it could even be a door slamming or um, maybe you hit a drum kit or some other percussion instrument that you've got handy 
and so on. You can build up a whole series of sounds on the iPad screen, which you can then play back. Now, the great thing about this is that you can use those samples to then put together a composition. So there's another screen which is actually like the arranging screen, similar to what you might see in GarageBand. And you can basically put your samples together in, in a combination um, across a number of bars and create a piece of music that way. So really great because you're starting off with well, sounds from scratch, that's one of the things that I really like. So rather than choosing, say, a keyboard, a synthesizer sound and um, getting students to play that, they're actually making the instrument in the first place totally from scratch because they're using their own sounds. Um, one of the great things about the soundboard is that there are three, already three predefined uh, squares which are called hi-hat, kick and snare drum. And it encourages you to make a snare drum sound with your mouth and a kick drum sound and a hi-hat sound. And then it can automatically put them together in a pattern, which will be a drum kit pattern. There's some pre, uh, predefined drum kit styles. So you can choose a hip hop one or a, a sort of a blues one. And it will use your own sounds to build this drum pattern. So it's really great, quick way to get started. You could also do it manually if you wanted to as well. But I really love the fact that it allows students to get started very quickly. Now, one of the apps that I am going to lose once I update to iOS 11 is called MadPad. And MadPad just has not been updated for at least a couple of years, I think now. So I know that it's going to die as soon as I update. But for me, SampleBot, this new app, is kind of a little bit like a replacement for MadPad. SampleBot does not have a video component like MadPad does. When, Mad, when you create sounds in MadPad, you do the same thing. You basically record a sample of um, a, some sort of sound that you're creating, but it also captures video, which is a really nice feature. SampleBot doesn't do that, but I'm not too heartbroken because SampleBot does some extra things that MadPad doesn't do. And it gives you a little bit more flexibility in the way you can compose and record your end composition project. So I will link to SampleBot itself where you can download it in the App Store, but I'll also link to a couple of YouTube videos that just give you a quick overview of how it works. So really good one, lots of fun. App number four for my suggested list of top 10 is Incredibox. And this is a really great, fun, creative music app. I know a lot of you know it already. It's one that allows you to explore a cappella singing, beatboxing, arranging, remixing. And it's basically got predefined sounds which are made by some dudes. I call them dudes because they look kind of cool on the screen. And basically you can build up a piece of music in this way. Now this one has less flexibility in terms of you're not creating sounds from scratch but I don't think that's a big thing I think it's um, well worth using in other ways so you can use it to explore a cappella singing or beatboxing you can actually get students to imitate some of the patterns that are in the app you could explore form so they can put together the sounds in a certain specific way in the way you've been discussing form in the classroom Great way to talk about remixing and arranging. And I've got a couple of lesson plans on my website that you can download for free. So I will link to those as well if you want to explore more of that one. App number five is called Padlet. And this is another app suggestion, which is not a music specific app, but it's a general education app. It's a really great, flexible one again. And I actually recorded in the previous episode, recorded a whole episode about Padlet itself. Now, this is a an app which is uh, basically giving you like a digital board, like a bulletin board, a virtual bulletin board. And it's just a really great, easy to use app, which allows you to capture ideas, collaborate with other people and save links and even get feedback. So essentially, once you open up Padlet, you can start a new board yourself or join up with someone else's board. And when you're in, in looking at a board in Padlet, you can add text. You can add like, it's kind of like adding sticky notes to the screen. You can add some text there. You could link to a YouTube video. You could link to um, some article that's online. Uh, you can create your own images and upload them to this. So it's a, just a great way to capture ideas all within one topic area, or even to get students to give you feedback on a specific thing. So you might just ask a question for the day in class and the students all log into the Padlet board 
and just simply write their written response and everybody gets to see everybody's responses. So it's a great way. It's basically like having an interact, uh, not an interactive whiteboard, sorry, a regular whiteboard that you would write on with a pen, but you're doing it in a digital format. And the beauty of that is that they can then access this anywhere. So they could go home and if they needed to do further work and see what everybody had discussed in class, students could actually log into the same Padlet board and see everything there. Now, this is a great um, app and, and service. The website itself can be accessed from any device. So you can log in from a computer just by visiting the website. But they actually have this app version, which is free. And it just allows you to see it on the iPad in a more easy way. I will link to the previous podcast episode where I've talked about Padlet. So if you want to learn more about it, you can listen to that one. This episode of the Music Tech Teacher Podcast is brought to you by the Midnight Music Community. The Midnight Music Community is an online space for music teachers who'd like help using technology in their music lessons. There are online courses, video tutorials, lesson plans, music tech news, and professional development certificates are provided for any training that you undertake. I'm inside the community every day, personally answering members' questions and sharing tips and ideas. The best thing is that you get to connect with hundreds of other music teachers just like you and share your own experiences and occasional music tech frustrations. For more information and a special joining price just for the listeners of this podcast, visit midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. That's midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. Now, for number six, I'm going to mention note naming apps. Now, I'm cheating a little bit here because rather than giving you one app name, it's like like go and get this app, I'm just going to give you three different ones to choose from and they kind of depend which age group you're teaching and what you want to get out of a note naming app. So I think it's it can be really useful having a note naming app which will drill students on the notes of the staff. And there are quite a few of them out there in the app store. Uh, my choice usually uh, apps um, that, that do note naming are the ones that allow you to choose some parameters yourself. So you might want to set the number of notes that students are being tested on rather than being tested randomly on all notes in the entire treble clef. Well, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them. You can narrow down in some of the apps, you get the option to narrow down the choices You might just want to test your students on B, A and G, for instance. So you can set that in a number of apps. Sometimes you want students to answer the note naming question with a letter name. You might want them to see a range of letters on the screen and they're going to choose the letter A if they see an A come across or C. Sometimes you might actually want them to identify the note by choosing a note on a keyboard, like a musical keyboard on the screen. So some of the apps will also allow you to do that. And for those of you doing solfa with students, some apps will allow you to choose solfa names, do, re, mi, so far, and so on. So one of the apps that I really like is called Flashnote Derby. Now, this is a great app. It's got all of those flexibility options that I mentioned. You can choose notes of the um, of the bass clef, of the treble clef. You can have students tested on the entire range, the whole grand staff. You can choose to have them tested with letter names or a note on the keyboard or a solfa name. And you can narrow those choices down to just a few notes if they're only starting out and they know a few notes. Now, this one, although it's got all those great options, it may not suit everybody. It's kind of geared to younger students. So if you're working with older students, it might not be so suitable. So just take a look, decide whether you think it's going to work for them. And basically, this one has uh, essentially two horses which are racing across the screen. And one of the horses is your own horse. And the more notes that you get correct the further forward, the further ahead your horse pulls. And then if you get a number of them correct, you will actually win the race. So that's the the derby kind of tie in there. Now, the other app that I really like, and this app actually has two versions of the same app, which is called Staff Wars. So this is my other suggested app to get. And Staff Wars is really great. It really appeals to all ages. So right through from from young kids, you know, to middle school because it's got this Star Wars type theme to it. So this one, instead of having the horse racing theme, basically there's a spaceship at the bottom of the screen and 
when you press start, a note flies in across the stave and you need to identify it by pressing a letter name at the bottom of the screen and if you get it correct, the spaceship will shoot the note. And so you keep playing until, you know, you lose lives. You lose life if you miss a note or if your note that's coming across the treble clef um, across, across the staff, sorry, reaches the clef itself, the treble clef or the bass clef or the alto clef, depending on which one you choose at the beginning. Now that one does have also some choices. You can set that to have a wide range of notes that are tested, a smaller range. You can do spaces only or lines only on the staff, but you don't have quite as much flexibility of options as Flash Note Derby. So that's, that one's up to you. Depends whether the first one will work better or this one. Now, Star Wars has a second version, which is called Star Wars Live. And this one actually allows you to use the iPad microphone. So instead of uh, tapping a letter name on the screen to identify the note, you actually play or sing the note instead. And if you play or sing the correct pitch, the spaceship will shoot the note just like it did before. Now, I say sing, I don't know if a lot of people know that you can do this, but I've used it um, with group of, you know, groups in workshops where we've actually sung, we haven't had instruments handy. So we've actually done it by just singing solfa. It doesn't even really matter what um, syllable you sing. We just picked a, you know, like solfa names, for instance. So I just set the range to be a good range for voices and we just sang the correct pitch. And if we did, uh, the note was shot and if we didn't, it, we just died and it worked really well actually I've done it a few times with a group so you don't necessarily just have a single have to have a single student using this it can be really good to have a group uh, going with it too so that's the three note naming apps so that's my number six is a note naming app but choose which whatever one works for you so flash note derby or star wars or star wars live I've also got a blog post which gives you some scorecards that you might want to use with Star Wars. So if you're actually using, if you're actually listening to this and you don't have access to a class set of iPads, you've just got your own single teacher iPad, there's still a way that you can use Star Wars with your whole class uh, by using some scorecards that I've put together. Now app number seven is a free handwriting notation app, Notate Me Now. And again, this is um, personal choice, I suppose, really. It depends what sorts of things you do with your students. But I found that most teachers like to have some kind of notation element in what they're doing with technology. And this is one that allows students to handwrite on the screen. And basically, their handwriting is transformed in literally in front of your eyes into printed notation, printed in inverted commas. So as you handwrite notes, they will appear in the staff above and they look like printed ones as if you've created them with something like Sibelius or Finale and it just looks really cool. So students can use this. You can uh, make the stave quite big on the screen and they can handwrite with their finger or with a, um, a stylus if you've got access to those at school. Now, it's not perfect for you know, really young students, you might just need to test out whether their motor skills are going to work with this app. Um, I would probably say you're going to get more success with older students, so upper elementary and middle school students. But it's definitely still worth testing out and seeing if it will work. Now, Notate Me Now is the free version of the app. There is a paid version to accompany this, and this is not one that you would need to get for all the students. It's very, it's you know, much more um, pricey. But the free version would be fine for a lot of the things that you can do in class. It has some limitations. So the free one allows you to have one staff only at a time. But that can still be useful if you're getting them to write melodies and so on. They can write the melody, handwrite the melody in the app, and then they can go to the printed view and you can actually get them to print out their notation. So it gives them that sense of, wow, I, look, I have a published version of my own composition and that looks kind of cool. I'll link to a blog post that I've created about Notate Me Now. I actually did this quite some time ago. Um, I, my younger son, Josh, is now 10 and a half, nearly 11. Uh, but when he was younger, I think he was about seven, I actually recorded him, I video recorded him using the Notate Me, app, Notate Me Now app because I just wanted to show how a younger child would handle the motor skills of using the app and how, how it would work with them writing on the screen. So he, he managed to do it at that age. So you can go on to YouTube and see him using the app. Um, it gets quite funny at one point, uh, but he did manage to use it. But 
I do think students younger that may struggle um, quite a bit with using it. So, you know, just test it out and see how it goes for you and your students. Now, the number eight app I'm going to suggest is called Seesaw. And Seesaw, again, is not a music app. It's actually an app that allows you to share work between students and teachers. It's a great way to send work back and forth between students and teachers. It's a great way to um, get students to build up a digital portfolio. It's really popular right now with a lot of teachers and there's a really active community of Seesaw users on, uh, I think it's Facebook, there's a, a group of Seesaw teachers Really great to go in there and just see how they're using it. Now, I'm going to link to a couple of things in the show notes to do with Seesaw. One is I chatted to Amy Burns, and I think that was episode number 18 of the Music Tech Teacher podcast. She talks about how she uses Seesaw in the classroom and how it's really transformed a lot of what she's been doing and how it's been super successful. And I'm also going to link to another uh, teacher that I know, Cherie Herring, who's fantastic with technology as well, just like Amy. And Cherie has a fantastic set of resources which show you how she's been using Seesaw in the classroom. So she's been using it for capturing work and doing like a flipped classroom model. And Cherie's really generous with her time and puts lots of resources up on her website um, where you can see how she's using it. And she gives away a lot of templates and things like that on there, um, not just for Seesaw, but for lots of other things she's been using too. So I'll link to both of those in the show notes. Now, my ninth app suggestion is to include a quiz app of some sort. There are some really great quiz apps and websites around which just make assessment lots of fun. And some students I've heard are being are begging to be tested on topics like music theory. Um, really and truly, I've had a teacher tell me that his grade seven students were begging to do music theory tests in classes when he had them show up for band, um, you know, band rehearsals and stuff because they love doing these quizzes so much. So I know a lot of you are familiar with one called Kahoot, which is lots of fun. It's very much game style, so it's it's kind of like you're running a game quiz and a game show and lots of fun. So if you've got the app, it just makes it much easier to use um, Kahoot in the classroom and basically students use the app to provide their answer for each question of the quiz that you're running. Uh, really easy to use, lots of fun and you set up your own quizzes, uh, but you can also search for other people's quizzes that are in existence that are, have been made, made available for other people to use. So if you go onto Kahoot, just do a little search and see what's there for music quizzes and you might find that there's something that someone's already made which will save you the time of making a quiz yourself. But, you know, it's really easy to also do it, um, you know, yourself tailored to exactly what you've been teaching in the classroom. You can set up questions, they can have images and you can use exactly what you want in your own quizzes. Now, there's another quiz tool called Quizzes. And I haven't used this one as much, but it seems to be um, really popular also and lots of fun too. And it's got that game style uh, feeling to it too. Uh, this one has the added bonus, particularly for middle school students, that after every question, a meme shows up, you know, with disappointment if they've got the question wrong or joy and just funny, funny pictures and that sort of thing. So again, it's a great one to, to have a look at and to test out. But I think that's a great inclusion. If you include that at the beginning of the year, you've got that all year to use with the students. They have access to that app there. I've got a couple of things I'll link to, which you can uh, see some more information about using apps like that for formative assessment. I've got a blog post that I've written and also another podcast episode about the same topic too. So if you want to do some further reading or listening about that, I'll link to those in the show notes. Now, the last one I'm going to suggest, and once again, it's not a music app, uh, is called Enigma, and this is actually a QR code reader. It, it doesn't have to be particularly the Enigma QR code reader, but any QR code reader I think is a really good addition to student school iPads. And if you're not really familiar with QR codes, they're basically like a kind of like a barcode which can be read by smartphones and iPads and Android tablets. And what a QR code does is once you scan this QR code, it will take you to something that lives online. 
So I think of it as a super fast way of getting to an iPad to somewhere online. So if you wanted students, for instance, to visit a specific website and the website has a really long, complicated link, you can imagine how frustrating that is in class time if you were to read out the whole really long URL and it's got lots of numbers and letters and even if you put it up on the board and students are copying it, There's all sorts of uh, places where things can go wrong and it can take a long time to get a whole class group onto one website if they're not just sort of clicking on it. So this is a great way to get class, uh, a whole set of uh, students onto a website very quickly because what you can do is basically translate that link into a scannable QR code and you can just show students the QR code either by printing it out and sticking it on the wall or by displaying it on a data projector. And they can lift up their iPad, open the QR code app and scan it. And straight away, it will take them to a specific web page or even a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder or a YouTube video perhaps or a Wikipedia page. And it's just a really quick way to get them to that online location. Now, there's actually other applications for QR codes. Um, what I've One of the projects that I have inside my online community for iPads is to create a singing wall. So essentially, if students have uh, created a composition or some sort of song and they have a recording of themselves performing that piece, you could have uh, them also create a picture of something to represent their song and On the picture, you could stick a QR code. Now, the QR code, once it's scanned, can actually take you straight to a recording of their composition that they've made. Now, there's a little bit more to that in setup terms, but basically uh, from the point of view of, of setting it up so that this works, the recording that the students have created just needs to live online somewhere. So you either upload it to a website somewhere that you have access to or you even just put it in um, your Google Drive account or Google Apps for Education or into a Dropbox folder and you get a link for it. Now with that link, you can go to a QR code generation site and they're free. You basically go there. It's as simple as pasting in the web address that you've got and it will give you a QR code that you download or print out. So it's super easy and I love this idea of the singing wall where, you know, you've got a wall of pictures with a small QR code in the corner and other students can come along and scan the QR code and hear what their friends have done. Great for parents as well. If parents are coming to visit your classroom or you're walking down your corridor, you can have basically an interactive display in your school space. Great for advocacy. Um, It could be something that you put around the school as well, you know, for school tours and things when um, parents come to look at the school as prospective parents, then you could have things like this, uh, give them access to things that you're doing in the music department. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that there are also a number of websites that you might like to consider, and this is really useful because it saves you having to download apps in the first place. So they can be, these can be used to supplement any apps that you've got, or if you're working with students that are even on a combination of devices, so iPads plus Chromebooks or laptops, uh, websites will allow you to use something across the board on all of the different devices at the same time. Now, I have a few favourite websites and I've mentioned uh, a number of these, probably all of them actually, in previous podcast episodes. But some of my favourites for creative music work include things like Groove Pizza, which is an online drum sequencing app. It's really user-friendly, easy to use and works on all those different devices that I mentioned. Another one, if you're thinking about doing video game composing, there's a great little website called Beep Box, B E E P. B-O-X, and that allows you to create kind of like Mario style video game music. It's really easy to use just like Groove Pizza is and you click on squares to create some pictures and uh, the, the app will play them back for you. Now you can build up short melodies, you can build up longer melodies, you can have uh, video game compositions or style compositions which are in a couple of different sections so you could get students to create an A section and then a contrasting B section. It's got lots of scope for arranging a longer piece as well as using it for shorter ones. 
A third website-based software program is NoteFlight for Notation. That's a great website to use and uh, you can use it for free to a certain degree, but um, it works much better for school situations if you actually have access to the paid option. And NoteFlight is a fantastic online notation tool which works really well across all platforms. So it's another good one to consider if you're using iPads with your students. And lastly, I'll just mention the Chrome Music Lab, which is a collection of kind of small interactive music websites that have been made by Google and they've put them together and they're fantastic. They're just little um, creative things where you can demonstrate a concept or reinforce something that students are working on and it's probably a, a bit too detailed to get into in this short time for this podcast episode but if you go and explore that one there, when you go to the website there's basically um, I think about 12 different squares that you can click on and each one of those is a different little interactive uh, music website that allows you to do something. So you can use it to explore rhythm and meter and melody and oscillators and uh, connecting art with music and all sorts of other things as well. So do go and check those out in addition to considering the apps that you might be installing onto the iPads. So that's it for today's show. As usual, if you'd like more help with technology, I'd love you to come and join me inside the Midnight Music community. If you'd like more information about the community and a special offer for podcast listeners, go to midnightmusic.com.au forward slash podcast offer. The Music Tech Teacher podcast is hosted by me, Katie Wardrobe. You can find more information and links from today's episode at midnightmusic.com.au forward slash 34. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.